Good day and welcome to our first lecture for EDUC 90, the teacher and the school curriculum. At the end of this discussion video, you are expected to have 90% proficiency in differentiating the two perspectives about the curriculum, in internalizing the scope of the curriculum, and in developing a definition of the curriculum using your own words. Without further ado, let us start with today's discussion. If you ran through Ornstein's 1987 paper, you will realize that, at that time, the meaning of the term curriculum has been identified as fragmentary and quite elusive since a unified definition hasn't been developed yet. If you ask me, I'd say that there had been quite a change since curriculum is now defined as the things that should be taught, why they should be taught, and how the students would learn them. Curriculum was derived from the word curere, which is Latin, meaning to run. It has been double-lifted from classical Latin, which means a course or track to be followed, and in modern or new Latin, which has been adopted by Petrus Ramos in 1576 and the University of Glasgow in 1633 to mean the course of study. As compared to other disciplines, curriculum is still young and its dynamic nature makes it so that the principles in curriculum changes with the society's demands. So, there are still a lot of debate among the scholars within the discipline, even just by its definition. In terms of debates, one long-running debate that scholars have is the definition of curriculum as rooted in traditional perspectives versus the progressive perspective. Before moving forward to the different perspectives of curriculum scholars, I want you to develop your own ideas about the possible similarities and differences of the traditional and the progressive perspective. Pause this video and fill out the Venn diagram presented here. After filling out the Venn diagram, it is now time to check whether you have a good schema about the two perspectives. There are a lot of scholars involved in this traditional versus progressive perspective debate, but here are the forerunners and their respective core principles which you have to know. First is Robert M. Hutchins, who views curriculum as permanent studies, where the rules of grammar, reading, rhetoric, logic, and mathematics for basic education are emphasized. He believed that the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, should be emphasized in basic education, while liberal education should be emphasized in college. Second, Arthur Bestor, as an essentialist, believes that the mission of the school should be intellectual training, so he stated that the focus of curriculum should be on fundamental intellectual disciplines, such as grammar, literature, and writing. It should also include science, mathematics, history, and foreign language. Third is Joseph Schwab, who coined the word discipline as a ruling doctrine for curriculum development. This means that curriculum study and development should be grouped together, not only those with the similar and related contents, but also those which could have similar approaches in delivery or instruction, thus establishing the existence of the subject areas in basic education, such as science, mathematics, social studies, and many more, as well as those in college, such as humanities, sciences, languages, mathematics, etc. Fourth, Philip Phoenix asserts that the curriculum should consist entirely of knowledge which comes from various disciplines. In summary, if one is to look at the traditional perspectives, curriculum could be determined as a field of study and is a highly academic undertaking. It projects a version of the curriculum that makes us think of written documents such as syllabus, 
course of study, books, and references where knowledge is found but is used as a means to accomplish intended goals. However, these are the initial perspectives of the researchers. Did it change through time? Yes, it did. This is one of the wonders of educational research. If you look at the recent works of these forerunners, you will see that some of their point of views have evolved and they have already adapted a progressive point of view as well. Speaking of a progressive point of view, in the progressive perspective, there is actually a switch from the belief that the curriculum is just a course of study or content. It has evolved to including the total learning experience of an individual. John Dewey is a name that frequents progressive education movements since, through his book Democracy and Education in 1916, he was able to inspire many educational changes, not only in the USA, but internationally as well. John Dewey believes that the curriculum is all about experiencing and that reflective thinking is a means that unifies curricular elements that is tested by application. People frequently say that experience is a great teacher, but that is like taking John Dewey's ideas at a surface level. Experiences are not the best teachers. The reflection from those experiences are. I highly recommend reading his book if you have the time. Second, Hollis Caswell and Doak S. Campbell viewed the curriculum as all the experiences that children have under the guidance of the teachers. Third, Nathaniel Smith, William Stanley, and Harlan Shore stated that the curriculum is a sequence of potential experiences set up in schools for the purpose of disciplining children and youth in group ways of thinking and acting. Fourth, Colin Marsh and George Willis viewed the curriculum as all the experiences in the classroom which are planned and enacted by the teacher and learned by the students. To summarize, it is quite obvious that the difference between the traditional and the progressive perspectives are due to the differences in the individual forerunners' intellectual foundations, their philosophical, psychological, and sociological beliefs. For our course, however, I will use the recent definition of curriculum provided by the ASCD in 2019. The curriculum is the plans made for guiding learning in the schools, usually represented in retrievable documents of several levels of generality and the actualization of those plans in the classroom as experienced by the learners and as recorded by an observer. Those experiences take place in a learning environment that also influences what is learned. Or, put simply, the curriculum is the sum of all the procedures, events, and experiences in the teaching-learning process. In order for you to generalize and assess your learnings in this lesson, kindly answer the activity sheet that I sent to you. For a quick overview, here are the tasks that you will do. Compare and contrast the traditional and progressive perspectives of the curriculum and define the curriculum using your own words. Lastly, here are the list of references and supplementary materials which have been used in this lesson. That would be all for this lesson. Thank you and have a great day.